Here we've got two billiard balls colliding, and I gave them both equal masses. And you should notice in this problem that there are three unknowns, and that's the final speed of one of the balls, the final speed of the other, and the angle of just one of them. And the only thing we know about the final state is the angle of one of the balls at 40 degrees. Now, conceptually, this problem isn't so bad, but mathematically, it gets really ugly. So conceptually, we just use conservation of momentum, and then it's an elastic collision, so we use conservation of energy, and we set up three equations, which is why I have three unknowns set up in the problem. So I'm going to look at x momentum and write down an equation. In my initial state, I have a mass of 0.5 kilograms, moving at two meters per second. And in my final state, I've got a mass of 0.5 kilograms, moving at V1 cosine 40 degrees. And another mass of 0.5 kilograms, moving at V2 cosine of this unknown angle theta. Of course, all those masses are going to cancel out. And I end up with my first equation. And it's 2, if I just disappear my units for simplicity, 2 equals V1 cosine 40 plus V2 cosine of this unknown angle theta. Next, we look at PY. And in the y direction, my initial momentum is zero. And so in the final state, it must also be zero. So rather than writing down zero equals a difference of two things over here, I'm just going to say that the upward momentum's magnitude must be equal to the downward momentum's magnitude. It's just a little simpler to write down that way. So I have a mass of 0.5 kilograms moving upward at V1 sine 40 degrees. And that should be equal to the momentum I get downward from the second ball, 0.5 kilograms, V2 sine of the unknown angle theta. And the masses cancel out, and I get a second useful equation. V1 sine 40 degrees equals V2 sine of theta. Finally, I look at the kinetic energy. And in the initial state, I have 1 half times 0.5 kilograms times this initial speed squared. And in the final state, I have two things moving. The top ball has a speed of V1. And the bottom ball has a speed of V2. Those are both unknowns. The one-halves cancel out, the masses cancel out, and I get a third equation. So 2 squared is 4, so I get 4 equals V1 squared plus V2 squared. Okay, so in principle, the problem is done. We applied the physics concepts, we got three equations, we have three unknowns, but I do want to illustrate how we go about solving these equations because it's a weird system of equations. It's nonlinear. So let me summarize up here. Okay, and the strategy I'm going to take with this is to eliminate theta first, and I'm going to use a trick for that. I'm going to use the fact that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So I'm going to solve the second equation here for sine theta. I'm going to solve the first equation for cosine theta, and then I'm going to add the squares of those two equations, and it'll come out to 1, and theta will be gone. So let's get into it. Sine theta is going to be V1 over V2 sine of 40 degrees. And at this point, to simplify my life, I'm going to actually move to decimal approximations. So the sine of 40 degrees I'm going to keep a lot of decimal points here. It's 
in equation number one. I'm going to solve for cosine theta. And that's 2 minus v1 cosine 40 degrees divided by v2. And again, I'm going to move to decimal approximations to keep things a little bit simpler. So this gives me 2 minus cosine 40 is 0 0.7660 v1 over v2. Now I apply my trig identity, and I go the square of this equation plus the square of this equation must be equal to 1. So I have squaring 0.6428 v1, I get 0.413 v1 squared divided by v2 squared. Then I add to that the square of cosine theta. So I'm going to have a 2 minus 0 0.7660 v1 squared over v2 squared. And that's got to be equal to 1. So now my goal is to take this equation and combine it with equation number 3 in our list. That's two equations and two unknowns. And at least now it's algebraic instead of having trigonometric functions mixed in. So I'm going to multiply both sides by v2 squared. Plus the quantity 2 minus 0 0.7660 v1 squared equals v2 squared. I'm going to simplify a little bit on the left-hand side. So I end up with a 0.413 v1 squared. When I expand that squared binomial, I'm going to get a 4. And then I'll get minus 4 times 0 0.7660. And that gives me 3.064 v1. Then I'll have plus 0 0.7660 squared v1 squared. So that's 0.58 six eight v1 squared and that's all equal to v2 squared finally combining the v1 squared terms i get 0.9998 v1 squared which to our level of precision is just one so i'm going to have v1 squared minus 3.064 v1 plus four equals v2 squared now that that's cleaned up, I'm going to sub into equation 3 and replace v2 squared with all this stuff down here. So I'll go ahead and move up to the top to get that done. So I'm going to replace v2 squared with v1 squared minus 3.064 v1 plus 4. And immediately I notice something nice happens. The fours cancel. And I get a zero on the left hand side equals 2v1 squared minus 3.064v1. So one possible solution here is that v1 is zero, but it's not the solution we're looking for. What would happen if v1 is 0? It would mean this ball is completely stationary. It also would imply, if I go back to this equation, sine theta is v1 sine 40 over v2. If I plug in v1 equals 0, it would turn out the angle theta was 0. So one possibility for this collision would actually be a head-on elastic collision with two equal masses. And that would mean the original ball would stop. The other one would proceed with the original velocity at theta equals zero, and momentum and energy would be con conserved. It's not the solution that we're interested in, however. Really what I want is the solution I get when I set 2v1 minus 3.064 equal to zero, which implies that v1 is equal to 1532 meters per second and we've got our first answer so 
So then I head back into my old equations and find the rest of the variables. I'm going to go back to equation 3 to find v2. And it's going to be the square root of 4 minus v1 squared, which is the square root of 4 minus 1.532 squared, which comes out to 1.286. meters per second. All right, we've got our second answer. The last thing we need to do is find out the angle for that ball that was struck. So I'm going to go back and get that out of this equation right here. I have sine theta equals v1 sine 40 over v2. And I have all those velocities. 1.532 sine 40 over 1.286. And so theta is going to be the inverse sine, if I just get a decimal on this real quick, 0.766. And that means theta is equal to practically 50 degrees, so 50.0. Now, if you would like to check your answer on this, and I actually did that because I came up with this problem myself, so there's no back of the book, you could go back and check energy, X momentum, and Y momentum, and make sure that they all check out. So I get the energy in the initial state. Now that I have these two velocities, V1 being 1.532 meters per second, and V2 being 1.286 meters per second, I can get the kinetic energy of each of these balls after the collision, make sure it adds up to the same total value. I could check the X momentum by getting the X component of the momentum for the first and second ball, adding them together, make sure it's the same as what I started with. And then check the Y momentum and make sure that the upward momentum of this ball equals the downward momentum of this ball. And everything checks out.